Uh, I have the Cubs in the NL Central. Uh, the story is the same. Um, Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, uh, they get rid of the loss of Arietta and replace him with you, Darvish. You. The question for them is the bullpen. Right now, Brandon Morrow is their closer. Uh, a young, uh, I'm sorry, a role that he hasn't had since he was a young rookie. So for me, I think the Cubs are good enough to win that division. But again, at the same time, just like the Nationals, they're kind of just resting on their laurels at this point. You're not just going to be good because you're supposed to be. So if that Theo Epstein got to get that closer situation handled, because if not, it's going to be a problem. And now it's a long year, and everyone knows the baseball trade deadline deadline is always action packed. So meaty, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I think they're all right. I mean, they went out and you know solidified their rotation with you. So they got John Lester, Hendricks. You and Quintana, who they bought in, you know, at the deadline last year, so they get a full season of Quintana. Um, it they do have to address that closure situation, but their prospect pool is kind of it's not running thin. But they've traded a lot of their top prospects already, and Eloy Glaber Torres a couple years ago for Chapman. So their top of their system is weakened without really bolstering their bullpen. You know, they got Chapman for half a year, and they won the World Series, which was nice. But two years later, now you're still searching for that closer again. Um, yeah, I think the I think the Cubs fans would take that though. Right. No, obviously. I mean, you know, you, that's a once in a lifetime thing for them. But I'm just saying, going forward, it, it's not helping them out now. Um, but yeah, their their lineup is same same as it's been for the last couple of years. Wilson Contreras broke out. Him and Gary Sanchez are, I think, the the best two catchers in baseball. So uh, along with Buster Posey, so they're going to be, you know, still really good. I think they're the class of the NL Central. I don't, I don't really see anyone challenging them. And that one two of Rizzo and Brian is always yeah. Always deadly. Addison Russell stepped up big time last year as starting shortstop. So they're solid. Javi Baez, they're good defensively. They're good everywhere. I actually think the Brewers might actually contend for the, the title of NL Central champions. Uh, this team is being slept on immensely. Uh, they just missed the postseason last year, and they added Lorenzo Cain. They added Christian Yelich to an already powerful lineup that includes Eric Thames, Domingo Santana, Ryan Braun. Oh, Eric Thames. What? He was a flash in the pan in like April, May. Okay, but he could hit home runs, right? Yeah, but where's he going to play? That's the point. He's not going to play, though. Right, but that's your first guy off the bench who could provide that power spark? I guess so. I'm not really. And you were talking about depth. Ryan Braun's always injured, right? Domingo Santana, they don't even have a spot for him at the moment. So when you're looking at that lineup, it's taken an incredible step forward. And Travis Shaw is one of the more underrated players in the entire league. Uh, the quietest 30 in 100 year of all time last year. Uh, they need to acquire another starter, but Chase Anderson had a great year. Zach Davies, they took those steps towards being top of the rotation pitchers. On top of that, Corey Knebel established himself as a dominant closer. They added, they added Matt Albers, the return of Jeremy Jeffries. That's two quality 7th and 8th inning guys. I really like what the Brewers are doing. I think that they're they're playoff destined this year. I, I think they're the, going to be the the wild card in the NL as well. I don't know. They they did have a great year last year. That's also because their staff had like career years across the board. And they brought in Yulis Chasin, who he had a good year last year. Can he follow that up? Jimmy Nelson, who's going to start the year injured, he was pretty much their age last year, and that was a career year. They're all guys having career years in like their age twenty nine or age thirty season. So. I'm, like, kind of pumping the brakes on them. That's why, like I said, I like the Mets over them. I like their Mets staff better than the Brew Crew staff, which gave me led me to give the slide edge to the Mets. But, I mean, hey, I mean, I can see the Brewers sneaking in there. But it would be at the expense of the Mets, I think. The Cardinals as well, I think, have a shot. Uh, they had a lot of teams, a lot of players that were unlucky last year. Um, Matt Carpenter, Adam Wainwright, and Michael Waka, if you look at their, like, advanced metrics in terms of, like, BABIP and things like that, um, they all had super, like, extremely unlucky years. Matt Carpenter batted 245 out of nowhere. Yeah. So I expect them to come back. And Marshall Azuna is the perfect addition for this team. Uh, he's going to be right in the thick of things. He's a incredible power hitter that can really do everything acro- around the field. They got a haul. They gave a haul back to the Marlins. So I, I like the, that addition. And the, bull, the bullpen's a question mark. Luke Gregerson, you know, added. That's a nice uh, addition, but... Still a question mark. I think the Cardinals, they got a winning pedigree. Like like Nick says, I like to focus on on culture. And I really think that the Cardinals have a shot to win this division just because of that, just because of that winning atmosphere. Yo, two teams. That's the second team in this division. We said that needs a closer. Like, yo, Greg Holland is still out there too on the board as a free agent. So if the Cubs want to move, make a move, I think that would be the move. It would just be a straight-up switch. Wade Davis. Wade Davis yeah. Yeah. My whole life.